It's interesting what you said about what makes a camera image cinematic. What makes the camera image from the axiom cinematic? Uh, I think before we talk about the image, you have to talk about kind of the sustainability of the platform. Because when you design a camera for a particular purpose, like this is made for drones or this is made for an action camera, you always have to keep in mind what the customer will end up wanting to do with that camera. And I think the big difference here with our project or our approach is that we know that we can't think of any possible applications that users come up with. But we still give them the ability and the flexibility to still do all that without our approval firsthand. So you keep like innovating and seeing customer demands and creating new cameras for every kind of uh, special application. But you're always lacking behind what users kind of bring to you. And in our case, we provide a platform so users can add that extra, that final step themselves. So if there's someone who has an application that we have no idea about today, maybe something that will be very interesting in a year or so, uh, with our platform, that's kind of simple to take this as a basic foundation and then just innovate on top of this. Uh, we don't even have to get active to do that. So. What is important for us is that this is a platform. It creates an ecosystem by itself and we don't limit people in what they are doing with it. And if we talk about image and looks, for example, um, we all know that we can apply different LUTs and we can play with raw settings from development software and so on. But you never get access to what is happening before that in the camera. And with our approach, the entire image pipeline is open, accessible and modifiable by everyone. And the look isn't just a color transformation. There's a lot of things that already on the level of the sensor affect the image. And currently, no manufacturer lets you actually change the parameters and the registers that control the sensor. But what, you know, let's say I'm an average user, yes. which I am, so I cannot program your camera. Um, let's say your project is, you know, in the market for two or three years. Mm -hmm. um, do you expect to have a community that supports each other, or you know, is there a website where I can go to 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 actually access those um, versions that you know enthusiastic programmers might have um, programmed for that camera, or how how do you expect this to pan out in the future? Yeah, well, we, we're in the process of creating a kind of platform for exactly these kind of things. You can imagine it like an app store, where instead of downloading apps to your phone, you can download new functionality to your camera in whatever uh, way that end, in the end works, if it's hardware related, software related, or related to the user interface. And like with Magic Lantern, you also have uh, people from all over the world who contribute tiny parts or tiny apps, if you so so and they make it available and you can again then use them, modify them, adapt them for your own requirements. Mm. So that's of the kind of flexibility that the platform should provide yeah. for us. Also accessing the actual image pipeline and defining that look in ways that are just not possible with any other camera. Yeah. So that's also an app in the end. You can download a new kind of uh, stock maybe, so, so to say. Yeah.